What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video and well we kind of got a problem. So real quick I'm recording this um I kind of want to look back at the YouTube videos and see when I posted the video really the start of the channel talking about like arcades and all that um but real quick I mean the real problem I have it's not anything major it's really when you want to look at buttons I got a small issue with the buttons that I use for these arcades and I'm really going to lean this towards the commercial side um let me turn the camera around you guys don't like selfie mode I know you don't but you got to deal with it but I'm going to turn the camera around I'm going to show you what exactly I mean so real quick as you can see we got four screens and only two of them are showing a game that is not the issue that we're having right now I'll go into that a little bit later on but the main issue that we are having is our LED buttons um, game room solutions again I'm not gonna knock the buttons I've bought these a lot it's just now that I kind of see it as far as a commercial use these buttons are not good for a commercial use I'm gonna turn the light off I knew that before I bought these that these were not really meant for commercial um, it's just more about now somebody maybe especially if they're gonna sell arcades to maybe kids little ones as you can see right now on a 14 button layout I got one I got two three four five six I got six buttons that appears as the LED is out but if you actually listen very carefully that one works that one doesn't work I'm gonna open up the cabinet and I'm gonna show you exactly what's happening so now I come here weekly and uh, I basically open up the cabinets and I kind of see how many quarters each one is I could automatically tell you that the pinballs unfortunately are not popular it's either the way that the cabinet is built or sometimes mostly the kids don't really know how it works um, I mean again I did a makeshift pinball it is kind of cool a lot of the adults kind of comment on it but the one regret that I did is that I regret putting these buttons up here because a lot of the times the kids assume that these are the flipper buttons where in all honesty these are the tilt buttons so some adults do recognize that you know a pinball flipper is on the side but honestly the most money making I would say where it has the most quarters is the classic arcades fighting this one right here plays Street Fighter 2 off the bat hands down the most quarters you will ever find in a machine always belongs to Street Fighter 2 all the time I would say weekly this machine makes about a good 10 bucks this one I just put to Marvel vs Capcom because this one went out that this one was playing Metal Slug I do like kind of a you know fighter and then kind of like a co-op kind of base game so this was playing um, Metal Slug but I did put it for Marvel vs Capcom because our Street Fighter is out I'm gonna show you real quick what I see personally every time I come in basically I grab the quarters and all that I might have to grab my flashlight out of this and as you can see my makeshift cabinet it works if I shine the light you'll see our nuts and everything player one side seems okay but if I look at player two can you see it let's see you got one there and you got another one there basically you see the micro switch Basically removing four screws out. Now my faceplate could come out. We're gonna nice and easily drop this as we do have our coin wire still here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and you could kind of see the issue that we are having. We do have three micro switches down. Player one is okay. As you can see here, LED is out, but micro switch is still intact. Basically, we are taking these out. LED buttons are not meant for commercial use and in all honesty the zippy joystick is not meant for commercial use at all we're basically swapping these out for hap sticks I found the guy on ebay it's a very common guy if you just look up arcade sticks and buttons we're going to basically put hap sticks and hap buttons on this so i ordered two kits because i do i am taking this one out these do work still good buttons and everything these are still intact but I'm very sure soon that these will kind of die out just like this one basically we're going to remove all the buttons out of this and we're replacing them with standard grooved hap buttons 
going to show you real quick a comparison, especially with this and understanding the micro switch holder. This is a very important thing. This holder right here is literally made out of the button. So it's not an extra piece like the Game Room Solutions button. But keep in mind with the video that we're making today, we are not knocking anything. We're not saying anything bad. Unfortunately, with the way this LED button is made, there is no way to avoid the headache that you see here. Basically, I'm going to show you real quick what the issue is. Again, standard LED button, Game Room Solutions, chrome finish. This is a good button. Basically, I pulled this from here. I just want to show you what exactly considers a good button. If my camera focuses, that'd be great. Let's see. There we go. Probably need it back. As you can see on this button, I'm going to have to put the camera down. Might have to edit in post, but real quick, the biggest thing that we have with these buttons is that the micro switch holder is literally this right here. This kind of small, very skinny piece, this metal thing right here. See that? There's one and there's two. This is what's holding the micro switch in place. So when you put your micro switch in and turn, it locks into this. The white is what pushes the micro switch itself, but this chrome is our issue. This is a good button. And this right here is a bad button. Side by side, let's line it up to be exact. And as you can see, the left and the right on this is here and the left and the right is gone on this. So again, this right here is a bad button and you can see basically the micro switch holder it just kind of comes out, chunks out. Um, again, it is commercial use, but keep in mind what I made the comment before about if you're planning to have kids play with this you know how kids are even some adults kids come here and they just bash the shit out of this they hit these things so hard that basically it's just oh you can see it right here see that you bash it so hard that you wind up breaking the silver holder that holds the micro switch in place so again these are the micro switches here let me get a good one this right here on the led this is the groove that goes into that chrome. So this kind of slides in and pushes it. Let me put the camera down. Maybe I could grab this. So now again, I'm gonna take a good one right here. And as you could kind of see it, I'm not looking at the camera, but you basically could slide this and click. And as you can see, our button now is good to go. Again, it slides in and it clicks. Sometimes the spring gets in the way but that is a good button. Let's take a bad button now. And basically there is no more thing to hold this micro switch in place. And once you press it out, that is it. So again, it's kind of the way the um, button is designed and made. Again, keep in mind, this is the LED button game room solution. So it does have micro switch. It's got this white kind of thing that goes inside of the button itself to hold the LED in place. So some of the buttons that you see on like Amazon have the LED built in kind of like a Sanwa simple button without a micro switch actually visible. Um, these, the new ones, the HAP ones that we bought, as you can see the comparison on this, this right here is what holds the micro switch in place. This very thick piece of plastic is definitely not gonna go anywhere compared to our two tiny things that hold the micro switch in place. Again, it's not to knock anything. I always use game room solutions. It's just keep in mind when you have little kids bashing the shit out of this thing, you can't really do much. Also, I mean, it's not really anything. It's really me. I should really tighten these, but a lot of the times the nuts do come out. Keep in mind, I have not changed the buttons on these at all since I posted the first ever video explaining arcade. So. I think this is at least about a year and a half old. So for a year and a half, we made it work. Sometimes I was able to put like black screws into the holder, into like the actual button itself. But obviously that didn't work out. Basically, I'm hoping my buttons have to be probably shaved a little bit, yes. So again, these are my makeshift buttons that we kind of drilled out. Our buttons need to be a little bit bigger. So we're gonna have to get our tools out and drill the holes a little bit bigger. So as far as real quick, the sticks to 
this one is just like it's it's not very responsive it does sound like the chamber inside of it has either like beaten or shaved off so i might just honestly switch everything and have these as standbys but you could kind of just want to put the microphone to it you could hear it this one doesn't do that this one is like I know for a fact the plastic is probably just beaten up. So again, we're gonna get these back to life. Let me grab my drill. We're gonna have to widen these holes. Well, after about maybe 30 minutes, we got everything wired up, all set, a little dusty. But basically we got player one, we got player two. Zippy joysticks are still good on this, so I'm not gonna swap these out just yet. Again, these are still pretty responsive, so we could still abuse these but they did come with joysticks. I'm not gonna open it, only because I'm a little tired right now, but uh, just real quick, gotta clean it up, because again, we had to widen the hole a little bit, but pretty good. So, can we do a one-handed Hadouken? <laughs> there you go, all right, I pulled it off. <laughs> a couple of tries, but we got pinball back. We're gonna fix that tomorrow. But again, just a big heads up. When you're doing the LED buttons, just gotta be aware that this little plastic is very fragile. New buttons are in, very clean, spring inside, no need to worry about anything coming loose. Great, easy stuff, guys. All right, guys, so basically after some fixing, we got new buttons installed. Uh, essentially, later on, we're gonna probably change the, we're gonna probably actually wrap this, but you can kinda see, scuffed it up a little bit that's not buttons fault that's my fault but so far so good on the old kit we basically had six uh not six eight we had eight buttons that were basically destroyed not holding micro switch in these essentially are garbage but if you are like me and you have many of these buttons the only thing that's valuable out of this button let me turn off street fighter real quick only thing valuable out of these buttons really is the spring, the color cap, and the clear cap. So basically we're going to take this out. I'm going to keep the spring. I'm going to keep this. And I'm just going to keep this actually like how this is. So this is a white button. So this chrome piece is what really needs to be kind of replaced. That's in the garbage. So again, basically what I keep is the white. This is actually how you could change the button too. Uh, this is how I put like the... Um, Oh, <laughs> and that is why that's honestly why I lose a lot of springs because of that but basically with this you can now remove the cap and that is how I do the names inside the button again guys that is it game room solutions LED buttons again you don't want to use these for any commercial use you can see there, one, two, three. My white is stuck. Boom. So again, we're keeping all these pieces. Those are valuable to me because I could always take a button and change out the color if I need to. But again, pushing the button in, closing the white caps, and there you go. Again, chrome is garbage, and that is it.